everyone, and welcome to Spacing Out. I'm Jason McClellan. And I'm Maureen Ellsbury. Thanks for joining us. It's time for us to get you caught up on some of the space and UFO stories that have made headlines recently. It's only been a couple of months since famed paranormal radio host Art Bell returned to the airwaves, but his new Sirius XM satellite radio UFO and paranormal show Dark Matter has been abruptly terminated. Bell is widely known as the co-founder and original host of the hugely successful Coast to Coast AM radio show. He retired allegedly for good in 2003 to spend more time with his family. But as many of you may remember, Sirius XM recently offered him a spot that was too good to pass up or so it seemed. His much anticipated return to the radio was announced in July. Sirius XM stated that they would be the exclusive home to legendary radio personality Art Bell, marking the return of the trailblazing late night host to radio with a new expanded live nightly call-in show on which he will explore the paranormal, unexplained, and more with expert guests and listeners nationwide. The show premiered on September 16th, but problems plagued the show from the start. Illegal streaming of the show and several technical issues prompted Bell to ask SiriusXM to offer the show free of charge on his website. Bell described, It's a systematic problem. For a caller-driven show like this one, speaking only to people on cell phones and moving vehicles is somewhat difficult. Naturally, subscription-based SiriusXM denied Bell's request. On November 4th, the Huffington Post pointed out that Bell's Facebook page had been updated with the following message. Sometimes when you're all in, you win. Sometimes you lose. By mutual agreement, Dark Matter will no longer air as of tonight. Artbell.com informed fans of the cancellation, but included a small glimmer of hope for his diehard listeners. The website states, We are sorry that Dark Matter on Sirius XM has come to an abrupt end. We'll examine our options and may be able to return in a different format and medium. In the meantime, Artbell.com will still operate as long as financially possible, hoping for a workable solution to bring art back to you soon. Keep checking back here often. A former resident of Novi, Michigan is still traumatized by a UFO encounter from decades ago. Nancy Tremaine says she saw a saucer-shaped UFO floating in the sky above her neighborhood in the early 1960s when she was just 12 years old. She can't remember exactly when the sighting occurred, but thinks it was during the summer of 1961. She says that she was playing at a friend's house when the friend's father called the girls outside to see the UFO. She describes the craft as a silver saucer-shaped object adorned with red, green, and white lights. And she says these lights were either rotating or pulsing. Tremaine says the next thing she saw was a light beam shooting down from the UFO onto the unmarked police car of an off-duty officer who was doing security at a nearby construction site. And according to local news site HometimeLife.com, former Novi Police Chief Lee Bagol was on duty at the police station on the night of the sighting. He acknowledges that the dispatch received a call from the off-duty officer at the construction site. Bagol remembers, he called into dispatch and said there was a strange object overhead. Dispatchers reportedly received multiple calls from other witnesses that night, one of whom was the wife of a city council member. After seeing the beam of light shooting down from the UFO, she recalls that her friend's father told her to run home. That's when the event allegedly became more than just a simple sighting of an unknown craft. Tremaine claims that as she was running home, she felt a sensation like being shocked. The next thing she remembers is being in her house. She claims she was abducted by the UFO. Although she doesn't remember much about the encounter, she says some of the experience has been coming back to her lately as a result of regression therapy. She recently stated, it was a very traumatizing experience that stayed with me. And she claims she's been taken by UFOs several times since then, but the experiences are never harmful or scary. Hometown observer and eccentric photojournalist John Heider recently joined Tremaine as she returned to the location in Novi where the 1961 event occurred. HometownLife.com explains, she's asking Novi residents if they remember that night, and if so, would they reach out to her? Putting together the pieces is one step in her healing process. Researchers recently determined that there's potentially tens of billions of planets in the Milky Way galaxy where alien life could exist. Scientists from University of California, Berkeley, and University of Hawaii, Manoa, used data from NASA's Kepler Space Telescope and the WM Keck Observatory to statistically determine that one in five sun-like stars in our galaxy have Earth-sized planets that could host life. A UC Berkeley graduate student who led the study's data analysis explains in a press release issued by the WM Keck Observatory, what this means is when you look up at the thousands of stars in the night sky, the nearest sun-like star with an Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone is probably only 12 light years away and can be seen with the naked eye. That's amazing. 
Andrew Howard, an astronomer with the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii, adds, for NASA, this number, that every fifth star has a planet somewhat like Earth, is really important because successor missions to Kepler will try to take an actual picture of a planet. And the size of the telescope they have to build depends on how close the nearest Earth-sized planets are. The research team included UC Berkeley professor of astronomy Jeffrey Marcy, who explained on the program PBS NewsHour, of course the properties of a planet that make it suitable for life is, the basics have to be water because our own human bodies are made of water. All life forms on Earth depend on water, and so we assume, perhaps incorrectly, that life out there among the stars would also depend on liquid water. But Marcy also cautions that not all these planets are necessarily hospitable to life. He explains, some may have thick atmospheres, making it so hot at the surface that DNA-like molecules would not survive. Others may have rocky surfaces that could harbor liquid water suitable for living organisms. We don't know what range of planet types and their environments are suitable for life. The team's research was published on November 4th in the Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. A medical student at James Cook University photographed multiple saucer-shaped objects in the sky above the Australian city of Townsville, Queensland, on Tuesday, November 5th. The Courier Mail reports the witness Joshua Thompson saw small black birds filling up the sky while he was driving home at approximately 6 p.m. He took photos of the birds with his iPhone 5, but when he reviewed the photos later, he noticed something strange in the photos with the birds. Thompson created a video from his photos and uploaded it to YouTube with the following description. I saw hundreds of thousands of black birds flying towards a river. When I took a photo on my iPhone 5 and looked back at the photos, I noticed two small saucer-shaped objects in the sky, and in the next photo, a burst of yellow light in the shape of a disk and six small lights in the sky. There seems to be a black shadow behind the object and another object in the top of the sky flying away. He told the Courier Mail, the six small lights really weirded me out. You can see them really clearly in this ring type of thing. Thompson also offered his speculation that the birds may have been some sort of cover for it to get away. Thompson took his photos while he was driving, but in the Courier Mail article about these photos, it is unclear if the photos were taken behind glass or if a window was rolled down. If, in fact, the photos were taken behind one of the car's windows, reflections by the iPhone cameras, flash, or other light sources could potentially explain the odd lights, but Thompson is convinced that he photographed something extraordinary. In a comment on YouTube, he explains, I've been watching ancient aliens and have been convinced aliens have contacted Earth for thousands of years, but I've never had a real experience. I swear this has been uploaded straight from my phone. Plus, I've submitted it to a reputable UFO site who said it will be shown as evidence on the site. The Courier Mail checked with the Townsville City Council's Park Department, but a spokesperson said he was not aware of any recent reports of unusual aerial activity. But we've since been contacted mm -hmm. by at least someone claiming to be the person who took these photos, saying that he did indeed take it with the window rolled down. Right. So that would rule out the reflection possibility, but we still have a camera, an iPhone camera, taking a photo from a moving vehicle. Right, and that explains, I mean, we have the birds, they're all elongated, as well as these six smaller white saucer type excuse me, saucer type objects that he's talking about that probably are only little small dots and we're seeing them elongated Stretched because out. of the moving of the car. And as well, I don't know if I buy this explanation because of, if you look at the photo, it doesn't really seem like this is exactly what it is, though maybe it is, is that somebody speculated that the bright long burst of light was in fact a street lamp as the car was moving. but. Uh, I mean, it's a possibility. It's that certainly could a possibility. The beam, the, the beam looking coming down. Right. We've got this long, slender thing coming down, and we can't really tell the angle of the photo because we don't see the entire frame, where the position is in the car, and how it's angled with the horizon. So if he's holding it out the window and it's at an angle, that line right. could potentially be a vertical pole but we don't have enough information to make that determination, but it is a possibility. What do you think about the idea that those smaller objects might be bugs? They could really be anything. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's also point out how odd it is that 
you have thousands of birds. This guy says thousands. Yeah. We don't know, but tons of these birds in the air at the same time. That's kind of crazy too. But it's a anyway, little Hitchcock-esque. Uh, yes, yes, they're they're just swarming. So there could have been lots of things in the sky at that time, as well as planes and other things too. I mean, right. the guy's driving down the road and then looks at it later and sees these objects. We don't really know, but there, there certainly could have been airplanes in the sky at that time. But it is an interesting photo, and the fact that we now know, at least this person claiming to be him, says the window was down, that's good to rule out the possibility of reflection. Right, definitely. No flash, maybe. Yeah. But. Well, let's talk a little bit about, just, I just want to mention Art Bell. You know, a lot of people were caught off guard, because Art Bell's show just started on Sirius XM, and then poof, it's gone. But, you know, I, I think some people are getting conspiratorial with it, but I think, you know, a, a lot of people, I will point out too, have commented to us saying that, uh, you know, they're not surprised because Bell's kind of flaked out on previous, uh, previous radio shows. Well, I would be more surprised uh, about him flaking out than over the fact that a lot of people didn't want to subscribe to Sirius to see this one show. So, I mean, that's kind of a lot of money each month to listen to one person. So. I think that the big goal here is hopefully that they're able to move back to an AM format. And if they do that, hopefully it sticks around longer than a couple months. Otherwise, keep listening to Coast to Coast. Well, one of his <laughs> biggest complaints was the fact that callers were on cell phones. And I'm sorry, that's just a sign of the times. People are going to be calling on cell phones. The majority of your callers are going to be on cell right. phones. There's the only not really landline, anything you can do about that. The only landline I have access to is my work phone. So. Right. Yeah, a lot of people don't even have landlines, so most of your callers are going to be on cell phones. That's just the reality of the situation. So if you're going to do a call-in show, that's what you have to deal with. So We'll, we'll see. Maybe he'll pop back. Maybe he won't. So right. And, I mean, he, he certainly shouldn't have been surprised by Sirius not being thrilled or even entertaining the idea of offering to stream the show for free on his website. Sirius yeah, no is a subscription-based program. That's, what, that's how they make their money. And he already pointed out that many people were stealing it and putting it online. So really, if people wanted to get it for free, they could. Right. So that seemed to be a non-issue. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, that is all for this episode of Spacing Out. Remember, you can visit openminds.tv. That's our website, openminds.tv, for all the latest news. And if you're a podcast listener, go to openminds.tv slash radio and check out Open Minds UFO Radio. Make sure to click on the like button if you enjoyed today's show. And remember to subscribe to our channel so you know when we post new content. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Maureen Ellsbury. And I'm Jason McClellan. We will see you in the future. If you have a UFO sighting or something you would like to report to Open Minds, you can go to our website at openminds.tv and click the contact button to send us your request. Or you can email us at contact at openminds.tv. You can also call us at 1-877-UFO-0110. That's 1-877-836-0110.